Welcome to the Holiday Detox Flow class. Um, we all know the holidays challenge us to do more and sometimes a little bit more on our plate means a little more stress, maybe not as much time to eat as normally as we, as healthily as we would like to. So this sequence or this class is designed to give you a little cleansing physically, mentally, emotionally, so that you can stay clear, you can move with the flow of the holidays, move with the flow of your life, and if there's anything that's stagnant, it'll help move it out so that you're open and receptive and present. Okay, so today I have Mark and Liz, and Liz will be um, modifying some of the, the sequences or some of the poses. So what you're gonna do is start on your backs, and as you start on your backs, we're gonna start with a kind of Simple twist, but challenging at the same time. So you're gonna reach your arms out to the sides, like a big T. And I like to press the palms down. So you really wanna press your arms and your palms into the floor. And then you're gonna lift your um, shin bones until they're parallel with the floor. It's called Jatara Parivartanasana. So you're gonna do the easier, the milder version to begin with. So like you're sitting in a chair, and you wanna keep the opposing shoulder grounded into the mat or into the wood or whatever you're lying on. So as you inhale, you're gonna drop your knees over towards the right about halfway. And just notice what happens. The left shoulder is gonna to wanna to lift. You gotta engage that core. And then as you exhale, you're gonna draw your shins back. And as you inhale, drop your shins over towards your left and keep that right shoulder grounded. And then exhale and lift. Now that may be plenty. If you wanna up the ante a bit, you're gonna straighten your legs like Mark and have the feet right over the hips. Now again, a ground that opposing left shoulder as you inhale, you're gonna lower your feet towards your right hand. Actually, it's gonna go more towards the hand up a little further, Mark. Yeah, and keep that left shoulder grounded. And then as you exhale, lift up. And then again, inhale, you're gonna lower your legs, but feet are moving more towards the hand, grounding that right shoulder. So you really feel that deep core twist. And then exhale. Again, inhale, now lower. This time, hold an extra breath. What happens is that left foot gets a little, left leg gets short, so extend through that left foot. Nice. And then bring your legs back to center, and then lower the legs to the left hand, or shins. Mm -hmm. And that right leg gets a little shorter, so extend a little more through that right leg, through that right foot, keeping that right shoulder grounded, bringing it back up. Good, and then hug your knees into your, into your chest and beginning to bring in um, a little bit of that forward bend twist that we will be working on. So from here, go ahead and rock yourself up. Come up into Sukhasana. So cross your right shin in front of your left, comfortable seated position. And from here, interlace your fingers, turn them inside out and press through the index finger towards the front of your mat. Then begin to reach your arms up overhead about halfway to begin with. And for a lot of us, we're gonna to have to work a little more external rotation, so triceps wrap forward. The shoulder blades are assisting you in this upward rotation. And then maybe bring your arms a little further by your ears. Keep a nice even extension. Notice what happens for most of us. We'll need to bring a little more length into our side waist and the back body. And as you ground through the sit bones, press through the index fingers, draw the baby fingers down. Yes, firm those arms. Now, as you release the interlace, reach, or have the palms face each other. Mm -hmm. Take an inhale. Now, as you exhale, take your left hand to the outside of your right knee and take your right arm behind you on a diagonal. Now, as you inhale, ground through the sit bones, get length through your spine, and then feel the twist or, or the origins from your sit bones. So it's coiling up your spine. Your collarbones are broadening. Then your gaze begins to move towards the back of the mat. So you don't want to get the cart before the horse. You really want to feel that twist coiling up your spine. Because sometimes we just kind of look and the twist has got to happen in your entire spine. So take another inhale. And as you exhale, look forward and then let your whole body unwind. And stretch your legs out in front of you and just cross so that you have your left shin in front of your right. And then same thing, interlace your fingers with the opposite thumb on top. Begin to press through the index fingers, reach your arms up overhead. Find that little spot where it feels a little tight in your shoulders, a little puffy in the floating ribs, and then maybe lower your arms a little bit so you don't feel that. And then there's a little more uh, softness in the shoulders and even extension in your torso. So it's gonna be different for every body. Right. So grounding through the sit bones, pressing through the index fingers, baby fingers draw down. Good. And then release the interlace, palms face each other. Take a deep breath and then take your right hand to the outside of your left knee and take your left hand back on a diagonal. 
Now pause, inhale, ground through your sit bones. Feel the length in each vertebra and feel that spiraling, coiling action up your spine as you spread your collarbones, that left collarbone. Grounding the sit bones and then moving with that breath. So bringing into um, connection the movement with the breath, especially when we do these twists. We want the breath to lead us. We don't want to impose the twist onto our body. So take another inhale. And as you exhale, begin to look forward and let your body unwind. From here, you're going to shift over to your hands and your knees and set yourself up for your first downward facing dog. And take a little time because it's a pose we return to a lot. So you want to make sure that the creases of your wrists line up at the front of the mat, the fingers are spread, and notice how evenly rooted Mark's hands are. His forearms are lifting away from the floor. Outer triceps are rolling gently back, and he's got all this width in his shoulder blades and a beautiful even extension in his spine. If you need to bend your knees a bit, it's fine. Okay? And some of us, well, not me, but some people who are really hyper bendy and mobile, you got to bring a little bit more softening of those floating ribs and an even extension in the side ribs and the back body. And then as you inhale, come forward to plank pose. So you're going to come to the top of your push up. And as you hold this top of the push-up, feel the belly engage, lifting up towards the spine. Feel the very tops of your thigh bones press towards your hamstrings. And then push your heels in so dynamically towards an imaginary wall that your legs are going to assist you in, in finding the strength in this pose. So take another inhale. And then as you exhale, just downward facing dog. And as you lift your forearms away from the floor, feel the length of your sit bones drawing back. And as you inhale, come forward to plank pose. As you exhale, lower halfway down to your chaturanga. Shoulders lower to the height of the elbows. Press straight back up to plank pose. And then downward facing dog. Building that heat slowly. Inhale, shift forward to plank pose. Exhale, lower to chaturanga. Press straight back up. Nice, and then downward facing dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. Fold forward in Uttanasana. So this is going to be more of a gentle forward bend. There's going to be a lot of forward bending and twisting in the sequence, right? Creating a little compression on the organs, and then after that, twisting it out. So we bring online um, you know, our circulation through these big movements, and at the same time, getting the digestive system to work optimally. So these twists help bring that out. And also with the lymphatic system, keeping that in balance. So on an intracellular level, releasing waste, um, bacteria, things that can keep us from feeling our vitality and our health. So bringing all those online to keep us clear, healthy, focused, and grounded. So put a little bend in your knees and slowly lower your arms to the floor. Begin to roll up one vertebra at a time. And then make your way to the front of your mat. Come into Tadasana. Bring your big toes together, heels slightly apart, grounding down, hands to your heart center into Namaste. A really potent time and a potent place in your practice if you want to set intention, dedication. Okay. And then as you release your arms, inhale, float them up. Exhale, fold that breath out. Inhale, come to your fingertips, reach your sternum forward. Bend your knees, step back to plank. From plank pose, lower down to your chaturanga. Inhale, slide or step your feet back so your shoulders are above your wrists and your collarbones are broad. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice. So starting with Surya Namaskar A, the sun salutations to get that circulation going, right? This oxygenates our blood. It helps remove the waste that we don't want on a physical level, but also energetically, it helps clear the debris that can build up in our minds, our emotion, things that are stagnant. So we get to cleanse and purify. So as you inhale, stretch back. At the end of the breath, looking forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale, ground through the feet. Float your arms up overhead. And as you exhale, take your hands to your heart center, Anjali Mudra. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, and as you fold that breath out, keep the lift of your thighs. Inhale, reach your heart forward. Bend your knees, step or jump, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice. And pausing a breath here, getting the hands to root, the hips to draw back. Feel the length in your spine. 
And then as you inhale, stretch it back. At the end of the breath, looking forward, step or jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back. Exhale, fold it in. Inhale, root down to rise up. And then hands to your heart center, Anjali Mudra. Again, inhale, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, and then folding that breath out. Inhale, flat back. Bend your knees, step or jump, chaturanga, find that core strength, lift of the thighs. Inhale, upward facing dog, shoulder blades draw forward. Exhale, inner thighs draw you back, downward facing dog, really nice. Okay, so from downward facing dog, inhale, float your right leg up behind you. Keep your hips square. So as you come up into this three-legged dog, there's the internally rotated, rotation of that inner right thigh up as the outer left hip firms in. And then as you shift forward to plank pose, you're gonna bring your knee onto your right tricep. So it's gotta turn open slightly. Mm -hmm. And then as you inhale, stretch back into that three-legged dog. And then as you exhale, shift forward to plank pose and then take it to your left tricep and just twist it and get it as high up there as possible. Nice, and then as you inhale, stretch back. And then as you exhale, step the foot all the way through between your hands. You're gonna stay on the ball of your back foot and as you inhale, come up into Crescent Pose. And we're not gonna hold this too long, just a nice way to stretch and open that back hip flexor. If it feels better to put a little bend in your back knee, you can always do that. From the pit of the belly, feel all four sides of your torso expand and inflate so you're not, we're not puffing those floating ribs, just like we did before with the arms overhead. Extend the side body, the back body and begin to straighten your back leg. Take another inhale, maybe look up and press your palms. Take your hands to the floor. Good, pause. Step off your left foot, step to the front of the mat, feet together, inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, utkatasana. So sitting into that utkatasana, mm -hmm. inner and outer thigh straight down to the floor. Take another breath and then fold forward, straighten your legs. Inhale, flat back. Bend your knees, step or jump, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. As you inhale, float your left leg up behind you. As you float your left leg up behind you, keep the hips square for a few breaths, internally rotating that left leg. Outer right hip firms in. Good. And then shift forward to plank pose. Take your knee onto your left tricep, getting it as high up there as you can. And then as you inhale, stretch back into that three-legged dog. And then as you exhale, shift forward, twist it out. Take your knee to your right tricep. And then inhale, stretch back. And then as you exhale, step your foot all the way through between your hands. Stay on the ball of your right foot. And then as you inhale, come up into a crescent pose. And as you come up into that crescent pose, perhaps a slight bend in your back leg. Frontal hip bones lift. All four sides of your torso expand, dynamically reaching up through your fingertips, rolling those outer arms forward. Begin to straighten your back leg as much as you can. Take another breath and maybe look up and press your palms, then take your hands to the floor. From here, push off your right foot, step forward, feet together, inhale, flat back, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, utkatasana, and as you exhale, come up to standing, hands to your heart center. Okay, moving this into a twist. Inhale, bend your knees, Utkatasana. Take your hands to your heart center, begin to twist towards the right. So you're gonna hook your left arm to the outside of your right leg. So you wanna create this lever, right? This lever of this arm gives you a little bit more groundedness so that you can lift the left ribs up and revolve. But then we don't want to rely so much on the external body parts. It becomes more about the breath and the intention. So the left hip has got to draw back a little bit. And then as you inhale, from your sit bones through your entire spine, feel that breath elongate each, between each vertebra. And as you exhale, then you can ring and twist. And even if your body does not move at all, it's in your mind, in the energetic body, you are ringing and you're rinsing and moving that through. So take one more deep breath and then fold forward Uttanasana. And again, inhale, bend your knees, Utkatasana, chair pose. Hands to your heart and twist towards the left. And as you hook your right arm, just bring the hands to prayer. And remembering that this is a breathing exercise as well. So when we hold these poses, what are our patterns of breath? 
also the patterns in our body. We're wringing out, detoxifying, but also the thoughts we hold on to, um, the limited beliefs, the old stories, and our breath is that tool that helps us go a little deeper. So take one more inhale, and as you exhale, fold forward. Nice. And as you inhale, come up onto your fingertips, reach your sternum forward, bend your knees, plant your palms, step or jump, chaturanga. And as you inhale, upward facing dog, exhale, downward facing dog. At the end of the breath, step your right foot forward to the front of your mat. Inhale, come up to warrior one. And as you come up to warrior one, hands to your heart. Transition, open into warrior two. So as you heel toe your right foot to the left, you want to line up heel to arch. Okay, so find the stance that works for you. Left, and look, look down at home too. Make sure those left toes are spinning slightly forward and that right buttock bone is drawing underneath you. So you want to get a nice strong base. Notice that the knee is right over the ankle. It's tracking straight ahead. This outer right hip draws down. Mm-hmm. Now from here, take an extra breath. You're going to begin to reach forward and take your hand to the outside of your right foot, perhaps onto your block. You're actually going to keep your front leg bent for Parjva Konasana. So first reach up through that top arm and then spin your palm to the front of your mat. But really you want to roll it at the shoulder joint, that left tricep forward. And then begin to reach your arm overhead on a diagonal. Right? And you want to feel like you're spinning that palm towards the back of your mat. And notice this left hip, right? This left hip has got to come slightly forward because you're still working that right sit bone underneath you. That's it. And the tailbone is lengthening away from your lower back. Even those frontal hip bones are lifting ever so slightly. And then it's about the breath. So that exhalation, work that little twist in your upper chest. Where there's a tendency to be hard or resistant, we want to bring some softness and be supple. So as you exhale, let that be an opportunity to receive the pose. And then reach your left arm up towards the ceiling. Look down at your right fingertips. Inhale, come up into warrior two. As you sit down into that warrior two, maybe you can drop a little deeper. Draw that right hip under. Flip your right palm up. Inhale, reverse the warrior. Left hand is so light, it's barely touching. Take one more breath and then release it. Arms up and over, hands to the floor. Step it back, down dog or vinyasa. And from downward facing dog, you're going to step your left foot forward to the front of your mat. As you inhale, come up into warrior one. Take your hands to your heart. Open up into warrior two. So heel toe your left foot to the right. First, you set up your warrior two because you know you're going to take it into side angle in a moment. But you want to have that heel to arch, working the external rotation of that left leg. So this left sit bone is working underneath you. right? So your sit bone, your knee, and your ankle are all aligned. And as you descend that left thigh, Press your right femur bone back. And as you evenly reach through your arms, take another breath. Now begin to reach forward and take your hand to the outside of your left foot on your block. And as you reach your top arm up, take a little, a little moment here. Spin your palm to the front of the mat. But really at the shoulder joint, roll that right tricep forward. And then extend your arm overhead on a diagonal. Nice. So as you do this, this right hip is going to come slightly forward, and this keeps your lower back happy and healthy, so you're not scoring the hips. But from your belly button, you're working that twist in your upper chest. That left shoulder softens away from your ear. Good. And as you hold the pose a couple more breaths, notice if there's anywhere that's kind of resistant or hardening. You want to let that suppleness, the receptivity, invite that. So. Begin to reach your right arm up towards the ceiling. Look down at your left hand. So reach your right arm straight up. <laughs> and then inhale, come up into warrior two. And as you sit right down the center, flip your left palm up. Inhale, reverse that warrior so that right hand stays light. The front leg stays bent. Take one more breath and then release it. Arms up and over, hands to the floor. Nice. Step it back. And from here, you're going to lower down through your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Okay, so as you inhale, stretch back. At the end of the breath, looking forward, step or jump to the front of the mat. And as you inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. 
and exhale, come up to standing. Take your hands to your heart in Anjali Mudra. Now from here, transition your hands to your hips. Step or jump your feet hip distance. We're going to take a forward bend, Padangustasana. So as you inhale, the sternum's going to rise, the collarbone's broad. And as you exhale, begin to fold and make a hook with your first two fingers like peace signs. Take a hold of your big toes. Close it with the thumbs. Inhale, straight arms, flat back. And then exhale, draw the crown of the head towards the floor. So allowing yourself to take this forward bend before we go into some more deeper twists. You're going to rock the weight a little more to the front edge of your feet. And the knees and the quads lift up. And then as you inhale, come to a flat back. Straighten your arms. Exhale, transfer your hands to your side hips. And on inhalation, come up to standing. So step or jump your feet together, and you're going to stay at the top of your mat. We're moving into Garudasana Eagle Pose. So what you're going to do is take your left arm underneath and your left leg over as you stand on your right leg for Eagle Pose. So I, sometimes I like to do it in one swipe. Some of us like to sit in one. Find what works for you. And if you can take the double bind, great. And do see if you can lift your elbows up slightly and feel the width between your shoulder blades. And as this challenges our breath, and it can also challenge our balance, you're going to begin to fold forward and hook your elbows in front of your knee. Mm -hmm. yes. And as you play with that balance, keeping your gaze, your drift, your focus just on one spot. And then inhale, slowly come on up. As you unwind your legs and your arms, let it all stretch away. Good. And then second side. So you're going to take your right leg over and your right arm underneath as you stand on your left leg when you're ready into eagle pose. So that Garudasana, the eagle, seeing things from a different perspective, right? So lifting those elbows up and away for a moment. Feel the shoulder blades broaden. And from here, you're going to begin to fold forward, hook your elbows in front of your knee. And playing with that gaze. Sometimes when we focus and we get away from the distractions of all the things that are going on in our life, we see things from a different perspective. Right? We see things from a different vantage point. And that one-pointed focus, staying connected to your breath. What's the quality of your breath? Mm -hmm. And then as you inhale, slowly come on up. Release your arms, your legs, stretch it out. And then return to the front of your mat. Come into Tadasana. Bring your hands to your heart center. As you inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, fold forward, straighten your legs. Inhale, flat back. Bend your knees, step or jump, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward, um, line up heel to heel. Place the outer edge of your left foot down for warrior one. Inhale, come up into the first warrior with just one breath. And then as you exhale, take your hands to the floor. Step your right foot back to plank pose and lower down to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward. Place the outer edge of your right foot down. Line up heel to heel. And then as you inhale, rise up. And as you exhale, take your hands to the floor. Step your left foot back and then lower through that chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice. So as we move through the B series, again, we're building more heat, getting that circulation. You can feel how things begin to flow. And as they flow, it helps us look at, oh, like where are some obstructions? Where are some of those blockages? Where are some of perhaps my energy is leaking? So we want to keep that strong sense of boundary without any barriers, right? Especially as we approach the holidays. We know that we are, there's more demanded of us. We may spend more money. We may spend with time with family that we love. It could challenge us. So it's really important we find our center. Okay, so as you inhale, stretch back. At the end of the breath, looking forward, step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. And then as you exhale, come up to standing. Take your hands to your heart center. And again, inhale, bend your knees, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward, thighs lift. Inhale, flat back. Bend your knees, step or jump, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. 
at the end of the breath, step your right foot forward, place the outer edge of your left foot down. And as you inhale, you're gonna come up into warrior one, and this time pause. We're gonna take this into humble warrior. So you're gonna interlace your fingers behind your back. You can always use a strap or a towel at home. And as you inhale, feel the collarbones broaden. And as you exhale, fold to the inside of your right thigh, reaching your arms up and over. Now, as you fold, you want to keep your front leg bent, and if you feel like it's too hard to fold forward, then you might want to heel toe your right foot a little further to the right. You do want to hug your outer right shin in, roll the inner left thigh back, and keep that outer right hip firming toward the center line of your mat. Sometimes it tends to flare out. And then as you stay in the pose, in this forward bend, you're creating a little compression. And as the arms come up and over, crown of the head towards the floor. Some of you, maybe the head reaches for, maybe not. Good. And then as you inhale, press down on that right heel, slowly come on up, then release center lace, reach your arms overhead, maybe palms press. Now from here, take your hands to the floor on either side of your right foot and pause. Step your left foot forward, nope, step your left foot forward a few inches and straighten both of your legs are setting up for Parjvottanasana. Take your hands onto your hips and then inhale, come up to standing, good. Now just pause here. Take this opportunity to square that left hip forward and then take your hands up your back into reverse namaste. And as you come up into reverse namaste, if this is not working on your body, it's fine to have the prayer facing down or the knuckles together, okay? Because it can be a little, the shoulders are tight, it can be a little funky on the wrists. Now you want to take this moment to, to really lengthen that the tailbone, draw the root of your left thigh bone, inhale, spread your collarbones, and then from your hips begin to hinge and extend forward, keeping the length of your spine. So in this forward bend, go for length, not rounding. And you wanna smile those shoulder heads away from the floor and then dive in a little further and find your forward bend. Nice. And then listening to the sound, the rhythm of your breath our patterns and our breathing. Do we hold the breath? There's a lot of really strong practitioners who can do a lot of poses, but if there's no breath, then where's the yoga? The yoga, we gotta give the, the pose life with our intention and our breath, okay? So all you're gonna do is lift your torso halfway up. So notice the torso's parallel with the floor. We're preparing for warrior three, so take a little time. You may need a prop for this, that's fine. You're gonna bend your right leg, spin to the ball of your left foot, and begin to lift your back leg to the height of your hip. And as you do this, push with that left heel, firm that outer right hip in, 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 in a lot, then begin to straighten your leg as much as you can. It's fine to keep it bent. Slide your hands down your back, and then from here, take your arms either behind you, fully forward, or maybe on the floor on a block. Okay, so block is always an option. Now from here, draw the belly button in so there's no bird bath in that lower back. A little more breath in those back ribs, yes. This is a really challenging pose, really nice, you guys. Now from here, take your hands to the floor and then lower your left foot to join your right at the front of the mat. Right. Inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. And as you exhale, come up to standing, hands to your heart center into Anjali Mudra. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. Exhale, and then folding that breath out. Inhale, flat back. Bend your knees in from here, either down dog or through chaturanga. So if you're feeling like you want to take it a little more easy, skip the chaturanga and go right to down dog. At the end of the breath, step your left foot forward, line up heel to heel, and as you inhale, come up into warrior one and pause. So again, this is our forward bend sequence, second side. So interlace your hands with the opposite thumb on top. And as you inhale, the tailbone lengthens, the collarbones broaden, maybe the, the gaze goes up, and then fold to the inside of your left leg, reaching your arms up and overhead. And if you're feeling like there's not enough space, move your left foot a little further to the left. Mm -hmm. And with that front leg bent, you wanna take this outer left hip and firm it in, spiral your inner right thigh back and up, and then arms keep going overhead, getting a gentle stretch in the shoulders. Hugging that outer left shin in. And then as you inhale, you're gonna come back up into warrior one, reach your arms up overhead. And then from here, take your hands to the floor, but pause with your hands on either side of your left foot. Then just hop your right foot forward a few inches and straighten both of your legs. You line up heel to heel. Take your hands onto your side hips, and then as you inhale, come up to standing. So notice that the legs, the feet are separated about a leg's distance, the right foot spins forward on a sharp angle. 
Take your hands up your back into reverse namaste or any variation you did on the first side. Mm -hmm. And then as you square your hips, the tailbone lengthens. Inhale, collarbones broaden. Exhale, begin to fold over that left leg into Parjvottanasana. So notice how they take their time, right? There's no just, it's not about getting your head down to the floor. It's about keeping the integrity and the extension of the spine. Because when we do the twisting sequence, if the spine's all crumpled up, there's nowhere to work with that. So you want the elongation, the extension as you fold. Same thing when we do the twist. You want to elongate your spine and then move. And think of all those little inner vertebral discs getting squeezed, and as they squeeze out, then they can soak up fresh blood and nutrients. And we want to keep our spine, our physical and our energetic spine, very healthy. So from here, lift your torso halfway up so your torso is parallel to the floor. Now draw that belly in, lengthen your tailbone, begin to bend your left leg, spin to the ball of your right foot, and spiral that inner right thigh up towards the ceiling as you step up into Vera 3. It's fine to modify. Hands can go straight down onto a block right now. Depends. So you want to roll that right hip down as much as you can. Firm that outer left hip, firm it in and in. Then straighten your leg by lifting the knee and the quad up. And then sliding your hands down your back, reaching your arms either behind you, out like an airplane, all the way forward is the fullest expression. You gotta draw that navel in just a little more. It's a challenging pose. Good, and then take your hands to the floor. Nicely done, you guys. Lower your right foot to join your left. And now from here, inhale, bend your knees, chair pose, Utkatasana. Now for Utkatasana, how low can you go into that chair? Pretty low. <laughs> and then go ahead and sit all the way down. That was really good. And come into Navasana. And I always like to say this in my classes where people kind of get tired or they go to the bathroom or <laughs> they dry off. So if you need a pause, take a pause. But we're going right into, or they are, going right into boat pose Navasana. And it's fine to do what Liz is doing with the knees bent. You can even hold the backs of your hamstrings. From here, you're going to lower halfway down into Ardha Navasana. And you're going to come back up into Navasana. Keep that length of your spine. Inhale, lower. I like to lower on inhales. And as you exhale, draw the belly button in to help you lift up because this is challenging. Inhale, lower. And then exhale, lift. And he didn't know you are going to work this hard, did you? <laughs> and then exhale and lift. Now stay in your boat. Stay in your Navasana. Reach your palms forward and have them pressing and bring them to the right side of your body. Uh huh. And then take them to the left. So you're doing like a little twist. You're rowing your boat ever so happily down the river. You guys don't look very happy. <laughs> I just want you to have to do a little distraction. <laughs> so yes, keep rowing that boat. Little tiny twists. Good. One more time on either side. And then pause, arms separate. Lower down to Ardha Navasana. Come back up into Navasana. Now this is where you gotta do a big rock. You're gonna rock back and make your way up into chair pose. Big rock back. <laughs> Good. And then come up to standing, hands to your heart. Ah, okay, time for Bhakasana Crow Pose. So step your feet back about oh, a foot. Come down into a squat. And as you come down into that squat, I like to keep the inner line of the feet together. Knees separate, hands come forward and they're shoulder distance. And you gotta climb your knees on your outer upper triceps. If it's really hard to get your knees that high, you can always put your feet up on a block, okay? And then as you rock the weight forward, the inner line of the feet stay together. The heels gotta pull up towards the sit bones. Try and drop your tailbone and lift the navel up and straighten your arms, press the ground away, nice. And then you make it your way to down dog. You can either shoot the chest forward, the legs back, go through a vinyasa. Nice, you guys. So, now that we've done that forward bending sequence, now we're taking the whole thing into a twist. So at the end of the breath, step your right foot forward, and you're gonna stay on the ball of your back foot for crescent. Inhale, come up, take your hands to your heart, and begin to twist towards the right. You're gonna hook your left arm to the outside of your right leg. Okay. So your hands can be in prayer. You can take second stage, which is left hand down, right arm up. You could also modify, if you want, this is a pretty challenging sequence, hand to the inside of your foot too, if that works better, or on a block. Okay, so there's always ways to modify these, these poses. Okay, and so you can see, as we do this twist, the tendency is for that back hip to get a little droopy. So feel the power of your left thigh press up, hug the outer right hip and shin in. Think about the breath, right? Like we said, inhale, extend through the spine. Exhale, ring out, spread your collarbones. 
then it becomes less about the body parts and about the breath and the intention. So take one more inhale, and as you exhale, unwind. Take your hands on either side of your right foot, pause. Just step your left foot forward about three to four inches, straighten both of your legs, same foundation as we did in Parjvottanasana. Take your hands to your hips, and then as you inhale, come up to standing. Now, for many of us, a block is highly recommended for this next sequence, Parvrita Trikonasana. With your right hand on your hip, inhale, float your left arm up. As you exhale, begin to hinge from your hips. Go for all that extension you created. Remember that extension in Parjvottanasana. Now take your hand to the outside of your foot or on your block. Pause. Take your right hand onto your sacrum. <laughs> That's my fault. And if your hand is on your sacrum, you want to feel how level your hips are. If you have lower back issues, it's fine to let it dip left hip, but if not, keep it square. From your belly button, begin to spiral and open your chest to the right, spread your collarbones, and then when you feel ready, once you've set it up, then reach the top arm towards the ceiling. You want to really reaffirm the, the grounding of the inner line of your right foot, the bone of that right toe, and draw the right sit bone back. And feel all this length from your tailbone to the crown of your head through your spine. Inhale. As you exhale, ring it out, left ribs forward, right ribs back. Now, don't lose this openness. You're just gonna to begin to look down. You're gonna step up and bend your front leg into Parvrita Ardha Chandrasana. So the left hand's gotta come forward and on a diagonal. So your left shoulder is right above your wrist, and you may wanna take that block with you. Mm -hmm. And for most of us, again, that left, I was gonna come get it for you. <laughs> that left thigh is gonna to wanna, to, you know, drop down. So really power that back leg up. Firm that right hip in. All those actions you just did a moment ago. Spread your collarbones. Take another inhale. Really nice, you guys. And then lower your right arm to the floor. And lower your left foot to join your right. And then you're going to spin your toes towards the left side of your mat and come into a squat for side crow, Parjvabhakasana. So you can notice as they come down into a squat, first take your hands to your heart and then really twist. You want to get your upper body to twist towards the front of the mat. And as you do this, then begin to hook your left arm to the outside of your right leg, fingertips pointing forward. Once you create that little shelf, then you're going to take yourself up into side crow. You're balancing on your left arm, not both arms. Mm-hmm. Nice. And that left shoulder is going to want to dip. Lift that left shoulder. Spread your collarbones. So nice, you guys. And then from here, you can either try and shoot it back or just release it. Oh, that was nice, Liz. Fancy. <laughs> and then make your way into downward facing dog. Okay, so from here, step your left foot forward. You're going to stay on the ball of your back foot for crescent pose. And as you inhale, rise up. From here, hands to your heart and twisting it out the second side. So hook your right arm to the outside of your left leg. Hands can stay in prayer. Second stage. If you like to fully bind at home, you can always do that. But you want to remember that back thigh is going to get a little sleepy. We want to bring that awareness to that back leg. Drop that left hip in and down. Hug the left shin in. And then feel the extension in your spine. And again, we don't want to impose ourselves into these poses, right? It's that balance of effort and surrender. You put all that effort. Inhale, get that length. And as you exhale, ha, ah, surrender and allow the twist to happen. So it's sometimes that paradox of kind of almost letting go. But take another deep breath. And then unwind the pose. Pause. Hands on either side of your left foot. Hop your right foot forward about three to four inches, straighten both of your legs. Take your hands to your side hips, and as you inhale, come up to standing. So you're setting up for your twist. So if you're using that block, you want to have your block to the outside of your left foot. And as you inhale, float your right arm up. And as you exhale, begin to hinge from your hips, fold halfway. Remember all that length and extension. Draw that left hip in and back, and then take your right hand to the outside of your foot on your block. Pause with your left hand on for your sacrum for a moment. And then feel how nice and even and balanced that is. Ideally, this is where we stay unless you have lower back issues, okay? So take an extra breath, go for the extension, then begin to revolve and reach your left arm up towards the ceiling, yeah. Now for most of us, the bone of the left toe, the inner line of that left foot gets a little loose. So you wanna ground it down, draw this left sit bone back. Good. And as you inhale, feel the extension in your spine and then as you exhale, you want to feel those right ribs coming forward, those left ribs back. Right, now reaffirm that left hip drawing in because you're going to need that when you come up into the balance. Begin to look down without losing that openness. Begin to bend your front leg. And then hand comes on a diagonal because you want your right hand 
right underneath your right shoulder or at that block. And then as you keep that right thigh floating up, keep spiraling, keep that twist moving in the same direction. Nice, you guys. Feel the power of your back leg. That's going to give you a lot of groundedness so that when you revolve, if the leg begins to kind of lower down, it's going to pull you out of the pose. And then find as much ease in this challenging asana because it is challenging. Listen to the rhythm, the sound of your breath. Know that you're ringing out. You're doing something very healthy and detoxifying. Go ahead, take one more inhale. And as you exhale, unwind. Lower your right foot to join your left. And then turn and face the right side of your mat. You probably have to scooch back a little bit and come into a squat. Inner line of the feet together, hands to your heart. And begin to twist towards the front. So really, you've done a lot of twisting. Feel that deep twist. Then take your hands, shoulder distance, fingertips forward. So you can really nestle that left knee up onto your right tricep. And begin to shift forward into Parjva Bakasana Side Crow. And notice when the shoulders start to collapse, you want to keep the spreading of those collarbones good. All those big twists. Remember that core strengthener we did at the very beginning of the sequence. Ha, and then from here, down dog, either try and shoot it back. Nicely done. Okay. Now from downward facing dog, step your right foot forward. Drop your left knee down. Uncurl your left toes. And this is going to be a nice, actually, hip flexor quadricep stretch. So you, some of you might want to just stay here. Otherwise, you're going to keep your left hand onto the floor, sweep your right arm behind you, begin to bend your leg, your back leg, and take a hold if you can, the ankle, prefer the ankle, but the top of the foot's fine. Keep your right knee over your ankle and let your hips drop down. And as you get this stretch, you may want to come down onto your left forearm if you want a deeper stretch. And then really ex accentuating that twist. You could spread that collarbone, lean back, open it up. And then take this pause. You've built a lot of heat, worked through a lot of different poses to just be still. Bring that balance to your breath so it's not forced or choppy. We're not over adrenalized in these postures. It's really this balance of effort and letting go. So you're going to begin to release the left foot, or yeah, the left foot. And then hands on either side of your right foot. Tuck your left toes under, lift your back knee up. Really simple, just step your right foot back to plank pose. Your choice, down dog or through your chaturanga. And then step your left foot forward. Get that left knee above your ankle. Drop your right knee to the floor. Uncurl your right toes and stay here in the low lunge or keep your right hand grounded and sweep your left arm behind you. As you bend your right leg, take a hold of the ankle or the foot, drop your hips. The more that you drop your hips down, the deeper the stretch is gonna be. So you gotta kind of figure out how much you wanna put on that gas or back off and maybe come down onto the right forearm, go into that twist, taking a moment in just stillness. This is intense, but as yogis, it's part of our, it's part of what we do is going towards the intensity, going towards the things that are gonna get us to grow and. Um, to go into discomfort, because a lot of these postures are not comfortable, but that's how we expand our energy field and what we are capable of and what we're gonna be able to bring forward into our lives. Clearing out, making space. So release your foot, hands on either side of your left foot, tuck your right toes under, lift your back knee up off the floor and step your left foot back to plank pose. This time lower down to your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog, take an extra breath in your up dog. Shoulders above the wrists, shoulder blades melt forward, frontal hip bones, feel your frontal hip bones lift up so it's not in your lower back. Take this into your upper chest, your thoracic wheel, and then downward facing dog. Nice. From downward facing dog, shift forward to plank pose. And from plank pose, you're gonna lower all the way down to the floor. Now we're gonna move into Dhanurasana bow pose. Okay, so you're gonna lengthen your legs. Keep your feet hip distance or narrower, not too wide. Bend your knees. Take a hold of the tops of your ankles. I prefer the ankles if you can over the tops of the feet. It gives you a little more strength in the legs, okay? And then even here, before you go up, you wanna feel your sacrum draw down and your frontal hip bones lift up to protect your lower back as much as you can. And then as you inhale, press your shin bones to the back of the mat and lift your chest off the floor in bow pose. And then with a little bit more dynamic legs, see if you can press them back a little further, lift a little higher, open up the collarbones, 
be careful not to shut the chin out. Keep the, neck, the chin gently drawing in. So you want to keep the back of your neck long, your breath smooth. Go ahead, take another inhale, and then slowly lower down. Nicely done, you guys. Turn your head, take a pause. And then bring your forehead to the floor. It's never quite long enough rest, is it? <laughs> so lengthen your legs, bend your knees, take a hold of the tops of your feet or your ankles. And then as you take a hold of those ankles, inhale, press your shin bones back. As you press your shin bones back, lift the pose up. Feel the power of your legs. Now this time, rock a little more towards your navel center. As you rock towards your navel, get a nice big back bend, a nice even curve. The chin is not jutting out. Gently draw it in. Your neck is long, so you're emphasizing this thoracic opening. Those frontal hip bones lift. Take one more breath, and then slowly release the feet. Turn your head. Close your eyes the opposite way. Okay. And then bring your forehead back to the floor. Take your hands by your floating ribs, so your elbows are right above your wrists, so they're gonna be back a little further sometimes than you think. And then as you inhale, peel your chest off the floor into upward facing dog. Again, take an extra breath here. Collarbones broaden, shoulder blades move forward. Take one more breath, and then downward facing dog. From downward facing dog, come down onto your knees and come into child's pose. So big toes together. It might feel good to separate the knees a little bit. So you've worked very hard. You've done deep forward bends, big twists. Got in our circulation up. Got into those internal organs, into our digestive system pushing and pulling and prodding our bodies into a lot of different shapes that are not always comfortable. That's how we move out stagnant energy. Again, bringing balance to our physical being, our mind, old stories, letting go of guilt, shame, anything that's keeping us tethered to the past so that we can really stay present throughout our lives, throughout these, this holiday season, so that we show up and we're willing to be vulnerable, receptive um, in the moment have fun, right? So from here, come into um, downward facing dog. So extend your arms forward. And then from downward face, coming up into your shins and making your way into down dog. And then from downward facing dog, you're gonna look all the way through to the front of your mat and then step or jump to a seat. And then you're gonna come into Dandasana. So in Dandasana, you want your legs extended forward. And you want to draw the buttock flesh a little bit away from your sit bones. Wrap your inner thighs down towards the floor. We're going to take Marichasana C. So you're going to bend your right leg. And as you bend your right leg, you want your right heel to line up with your right sit bone. And you want about a fist distance between your inner thigh and your right foot so they're not slammed in next to each other. Good. And then from here, you're going to take your left arm, reach your left arm up. Grow tall, like think of tall length out of your spine. And then begin to either hook your left elbow or you can wrap your arm around your shin, whichever feels better. Mm -hmm. And then taking your right arm behind you on a diagonal, you want to feel that length in your spine. So as you ground through the sit bones, that right side of your sacrum, draw it gently forward. Ground your left femur bone. And as you inhale, feel all that elongation. And as you exhale, spread your right collarbone. And again, notice if you just tend to, you know, we want to look at our patterns. Do I just tend to look to the back of the room to feel like it's a big twist? It's not about so much a big twist as bringing integrity to your spine, ringing out slowly and keeping that health, right? massaging the inner organs, keeping those inner vertebral discs happy and plump and healthy. So take another deep breath, and from here begin to look to the front of the mat and let your spine unwind. Extend your right leg back into Dandasana. Second side, bring your left heel towards your left sit bone. Remember, there's a little fist distance between the inner line of your left foot and your right thigh. And reaching your left arm slightly behind you, inhale, float your right arm up. Think of elongation, and then you're gonna make that hook. So with your upper arm, you can wrap around the shin, and then begin to engage that twist. And as you come deeper into the twist, draw the left sacrum forward. Ground through your sit bones. As you inhale, get that length with each vertebra. And as you exhale, slowly twisting revolving, moving with that breath. And sometimes it's even nice to close your eyes and visualize what you want to leave behind on this mat. 
and what it is you want to bring forward. And sometimes those old things will come back, but it's a practice. This is how we practice the alchemy of transformation. We practice letting go, and yes, they will come back, but they will come back different. They have changed because we have changed. We have sh shined the light of our awareness on that, and that changes. So take another breath, and as you exhale, begin to look forward and then unwind. Extend your left leg forward back into Dandasana. Ground down through your femur bones. Inhale, sweep your arms overhead. Exhale, fold for breath. And then as you hold your feet or you use your strap, whatever you need at home, inhale, go for that extension. And then as you exhale, just dive in. So again, grounding through those sit bones, feeling the elongation of your spine, wrapping your inner thighs down towards the floor. And then as you inhale, slowly roll yourself up and make your way onto your mat. Lay down onto your mat and set up for your final relaxation. So you've worked very, very hard for this. So really take it. Take some time to nurture yourself. You may want to use props. You may want to cover your eyes. Um, you know, just letting your thighs gently roll open, feeling the lightness of your femur bones away from your hip sockets, the softness in your belly, the collarbones broadening. So take a deep breath through your nose. And as you exhale, let it go through the mouth. And one more time, deep breath, full deep breath. Hold it at the very top. And then exhale and let it go completely. Just very slowly begin to come back, staying very soft, very quiet, staying in that internal space. And just begin to gently wiggle your fingers, your toes. And before we go back, when you go back into your life, whatever you have, whatever agenda, take this pause. Take your hands anywhere in your body that intuitively feels good for you. Sometimes it's your heart, your belly, your third eye. So our bodies are a receptacle of everything we've experienced. Um, our emotions, our mental state, and it's an opportunity to cleanse and clear not only the physicality, the toxins, but the emotional stuff that can keep us tethered in the past, not present in our truth. So really acknowledge what you've allowed yourself to work through so that you can be um, still, centered, and nourished that you feel whole and complete, because we are always complete and whole. Sometimes the busyness in our life keeps us from feeling and engaging with that. Okay. So on your next breath, begin to reach your arms overhead and lengthen your legs and take a nice long stretch. And then just begin to bend your knees, bring the soles of your feet to the floor and roll over to your right side. And then gently press yourself up and come into a comfortable seat. So take a moment to sit in Sukhasana or any comfortable seat that works for you. And you may want to even pause here and take five, 10 minutes to sit in a meditation, 
to be still, because once we take an opportunity to clear out those spaces, there's a clarity that comes with that and a willingness to be still because there's an expansion. So sometimes we can't really lighten the load of our, you know, our obligations, our agendas, but we can broaden our capacity to hold them. So I hope you found this detox flow sequence helpful um, and that you can show up to all of the festivities, all of the family and all of the fun things you have planned for your life, um, clear, open, receptive, and willing to be playful. Namaste.